Hey guys, this is a video on the air assault bike. It doesn't have to be an assault, it can be any kind of air bike. This is the machine that everybody loves to hate. It has become very trendy nowadays. You can see it in all the gyms. And if you have been training with me, uh, where you're a cyclist, a triathlete, or a crossfit, or whatever you are, you probably have seen it. Uh, and most of you probably have hated it. So I get a lot of the a lot of questions why is, uh, like a lot of people ask me why is this so hard and that is the purpose of the video today. So I want to teach you everything about this bike to answer the question why is it so hard. So we're going to attack the problem for three from three different angles. The first angle is I want you to understand the physics of this machine. The second angle is I want to understand the physiology involved. So how does your uh, muscles and your energy systems interact with the with the bike? And third, I want you to understand the biomechanics of this thing. So how does your anatomy, the length of your leg, of your legs, and so on, uh, interacts with this bike? And the conjunction of those three things will explain you why does uh, why is this bike so hard and how does it work? Because the second objective that I want to get there is that if you is that this should serve as an example that if you understand those three angles of any movement in reality or any you know like uh, physical activity if you understand the physics the physiology the biomechanics it can be so much more productive uh, and it can guide your training principles so the way i use this machine for a triathlete is very different from the way that i use it for a runner and it's very different from the way that i use it for a, for a crossfitter and that is all uh, guided by what they what i want to get out of uh this machine for them, but also is guided by, uh, most importantly, by how this machine works. So, uh, the only thing that I promise is that there will be no formulas. I'm going to promise you no formulas, despite my love for the whiteboard. Uh, so there will be no formulas, but there will be very clear examples. Okay, so let's start with the physics of the thing. So, when you're in a regular bike, there are three main forces that are working against you. Those are the forces that create resistance and that are the forces that with your amazing leg power you're overcoming. First is the air against you, right? Like the air that you're displacing by going forward. Second is the friction of the wheels against the floor, right? Like just that, just that friction. And third, especially if you're going uphill, uh, or if you're, only if you're going uphill, uh, gravity, right? Like force bringing you down. Good, that is important because in this machine, none of these three forces is against us, right? Like, gravity is going to keep us in the ground, no problem. There's, we're not displacing, so there's no friction. And we're not displacing forward, so there's no air displacing, uh, going against us. So all the resistance on this machine comes from the air displaced by the fan, right? So the movement of the fan in this direction has to displace air and that is all the resistance that we're gonna get. And that resistance, because the amount of air there is fixed, is gonna be constant, pretty much. There will be changes, but we're gonna consider it constant. Uh, good, because I am not, you know, like, this thing is always open, and not like an energometer in a roar. Um, I cannot change how much air comes in or out. Good, so now the consequences of that have to be understood. Uh, and I think the easiest way to understand the consequences of this is if you understand gears on a bike. So let's talk about gears on a bike just for a second. We'll talk also about deadlifts and then we'll come back to the bike. Come with me. Okay guys, so here we are. Let's understand gears on a bike. So right now I have this bike set up so that the chain is on the bigger plate here and it's on the smallest cog here. And I have put up this little post-it here so that you can track it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pedal. And what I want you to notice is that when I pedal, that, track that. And so for a whole revolution, two, I have only moved the pedals from here to here. Right, so a quarter of a, a quarter of a turn. Very good. That's awesome. Good. So if I now change the the gears, so I'm gonna put it on the bigger cog, and I'm gonna put it on the smaller plate. 
So this is the gear that you will use for a big climb, let's say, or something like that. If you track, if you track uh, this guy, so I'm gonna go, there's one turn. So in order to get one full revolution there, I had to go half a revolution here. So with the other, uh, uh, with the other gear, just with one quarter, the wheel was did one revolution. With this one, I have to go half. What this means is that on the first gear, if I wanna go 100 feet, I only have to pedal 20 times. And in the second gear, if I want to go 100 feet, I'm gonna pedal twice. Stop right there. I meant twice that, so 40. This is a post-production edit, and let's go back to the video. Though, it's the same work, right? It's the same amount of work, in the sense that I'm moving the same amount of weight, 100 feet. I'm just distributing that work in a number of reps differently. So let's, let's talk about that just to put this into context really easily. Awesome, so what you discover there is that what gear is doing is distribute the same amount of works the same amount of work in more or less repetitions. Okay, so that makes sense, but it will make a lot more sense if you think out of a deadlift. So if I have these two kettlebells, each one is 35 pounds, uh, if I do a deadlift uh, with both of them, poof, I have just lifted off the ground 70 pounds this distance, right? Good, that is the amount of work. I could do the same amount of work with just one kettlebell if I lift it once, right? So, I have moved uh, 70 pounds total this distance, right? With the two kettlebells I did it once, 70 pounds once. With the 35 I have, with, the, with this kettlebell I have to do it once, twice, right? So, it's the same amount of work but I distribute it differently. Good, that is exactly what happens with the gears on the bike distribution of work, the same amount of work distributed in different ways. Awesome! You understood? So if you understand deadlifts, you're going to understand bikes very, very well. And I'll tell you why, because we all know that lifting 400 pounds is very difficult, but lifting 4 times 100 pounds, it may be much easier, and actually, is the same amount of, amount of work. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's put it all together. We know exactly, we have all the things that we need. So we know the bike has a set resistance uh, and we also know that that resistance is pretty high. Uh, and we know there's no gears, which is obvious. And you're like, yeah, one, two, three. Anyhow, let's put it together. So imagine you were going on a climb in which, uh, a, you know, like pretty steep on a bike, uh, constant angle, you're just climbing, 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 so the resistance is always the same, uh, but you cannot change gears. So you know what will happen, that as you get tired, you don't have that gear to change so that you can keep pedaling at the same speed, which is what you will do, right? Like, we, if you were on a climb, and as you get tired, you cannot keep up, you just lower the gear so that you keep up the cadence. Good, in this guy, you, you don't have that chance. Uh, so, if you think about on, on deadlifts, it's as if you were doing deadlifts at a heavy weight uh, and you just have to keep doing them and doing them and doing them. As you get tired, those repetitions per minute are going to decrease. The thing is that in, in, this, in this guy, different from the deadlifts, you cannot just put the bar down, breathe and come back to it. You have to keep grinding. So as, as you get tired, the repetitions per minute are just going low and you just keep going. Good. So what that tells us is that we now have to investigate and research how uh, the body produces energy in two different stages. High resistance with low, with low repetitions per minute and a high resistance at high repetitions per minute. And that will start explaining you how your body has to interact with this, right? And that is gonna, that's going to start explaining you why uh, it's such a difficult beast because if you think for a second, uh, and this is a preview on the next topic, it's completely uh, optimized to not work well for you, right? Like so, a road bike is a machine that is beautiful and has been designed to to make use of you 
in the most efficient way. It's made so that you express your fitness in the bigger level. It helps you moving, right? The assault bike is the complete opposite. It's made so that uh, your body works in the most inefficient way. That's one way to look at it. In order to understand really that statement, we have to look at the physiology of the thing. So I know I have an answer out of the question. I know the physics are kind of obvious in some ways, but physics always should, once you understand them, physics, especially mechanics, uh, or just mechanics should be pretty obvious once you understand them. Uh, and so right now we have just answered how this works uh, and how it works in terms of work, which is what we want to do. And now uh, in the next part, we'll talk about physiology, which is how your body produces work. And that is when the thing is gonna start making a lot of sense, it's gonna start making, a, it's gonna start getting very interesting. Uh, so stay tuned for part two, uh, why the assault bike is so hard. The answer is because it's designed for it. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I'll see you next time.